answer the fucking question, bitch! What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Season 13, Episode 1, The Eagle Woman Has Landed. So try to like, comment, subscribe, and let's jump right on into it. So you open with all the speculation about Cal and Mauricio, about like, oh, they're splitting up, Cal's with this lady named Morgan Wade, blah, blah, blah. And the trailer, of course, which we all already saw. And the first, like, new real scene with Dorit and PK at the house. And they're meeting with a spiritual healer named Eagle Woman. And PK, who's wearing this fucking purple sweater with a video game little character on it, eating chips out of two different bags with a glass of Pepsi next to him. It's like, oh my gosh. He's like, oh, what, is she gonna fly over here? And he greets the spiritual healer at the door. He's like, which one of you is Eagle Woman? Because there's two ladies there. And she's like, oh, it's me, I'm Eagle Woman. And they, they, you know, she says hi to him. And the other lady, she introduces herself as Nancy. And PK's like, oh, do you also have a name like that? She's like, yes, Blue Raven. And for the first like quarter of the episode or so, there's like so much emphasis on Eagle Woman's name and all that stuff. And it's like, okay, can I just like shut the fuck up and just like, you know, with media and stuff, like, we, like, these kind of names, like, you know, they aren't, like, not unheard of, you know what I mean? It's like, yo, like, just, what? It's, I don't know, like, Garcelle, she's in the car, and she's like, oh, that can't be her God-given name. Her God-given name can't be Eagle Woman, and Sutton's like, oh, it is, and it's like, I mean, just like how the lady's name was Nancy, but she goes by Blue Raven, it's like, you know, it goes, like, it's like a, a ceremonial kind of name, or even, it may be even like a last name. There's like people who have like last names kind of like that, but I don't know. The lady didn't say it, but I'm assuming she's Native American. Just seeing all these people, it's like, Eagle Woman, Eagle Woman. It's like, it's just so annoying. I don't know if I'm just being like, too like sensitive about it or whatever, but it's like, yo, can just shut the fuck up or like, like just go with the flow or don't do it. You know what I mean? But like, so many people have stuff to say about it. It's just like, yes, that's her name. That's what she goes by. She's a spiritual healer. Like, what? I don't know. But anyways, Dorit mentions wanting to have all the ladies over for like a little um, spiritual retreat kind of thing. And she wants to take him on a, a vision quest specifically. So again, we have that shit. I'm just glad that it's not incorporating a fucking um, a sound bath. You know what I mean? Like there's a healing journey activity every fucking season. And it's usually towards the beginning of the season. Except on Atlanta, where it's towards the end of it, but um, usually it's kind of towards the beginning of the season. Kind of like a, let's start off positive and whatnot. And yeah, we get right to it. The ladies are all getting ready, begin rolling up to the retreat in Malibu. And there's some more discussion around Eagle Woman's name, as I mentioned before, but we already kind of touched on that. Kyle acknowledges that since last year, her relationships with many of the women have changed a lot. So, and when she arrives, she says that she bought a horse from the Netherlands. She's gonna place so much emphasis on this fucking horse. She's like, I'm half Texan. I grew up riding. I want to get back to riding. But I'm not gonna lie. A part of me gets what she's coming from because my great grandpa, he had a ranch back when he was alive. And I used to love going there. He had these horses. And it's like, so fun. You know, I wouldn't say like I, I rode, but I've, I, ha I have ridden a horse before, you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't say like, oh, I grew up riding and whatnot, like, and do that shit, but it is like, cool, like, horses are fucking awesome, you know what I mean? So, I hear she's coming from, per se, but, um, yeah, it's gonna be a major storyline for Sutton, I guess. But she's gonna be messy as well, it turns out, so, good for Sutton. Erica rolls in, and she's fully aware of how vicious she came off last year, but... She's like, I was doing what I had to do to just protect myself. And she said that she's on an island and her friend is now gone, Lisa Rinna. And on the screen, we see a screenshot of um, the email of Lisa being like, oh, you know, I won't be coming back. Thank you for eight years. And word on the street is that that was the initial email Lisa sent. But allegedly, she's kind of bluffing per se, because when she found out that the producers were actually, or the network per se, so the network was down to like, all right, you're out. She was like, oh no, like she's accused of like going back and begging for a job back. But that's what I hear under there. That's just kind of word on the street. But um, Housewives Twitter is kind of divided on the subject. People are like, oh, they're doing Lisa Rinna a favor by like making it seem like she left on her terms. Others are saying Lisa Rinna is vindicated. This is proof that she did not get fired. All this stuff. And I mean, I think it's, 
obvious that Lisa Rinna didn't get fired. I think Lisa Rinna, like, she did pull the trigger per se, but she may have believed that she was on the chopping block. She was not well liked last season. I actually thought that, like, hey, she should maybe take a break. I would be open to maybe returning a little bit later, kind of like Tamara just did. Um, I hope that Lisa Rinna comes in better than Tamara came in, but um, I don't know. What do you think about Lisa Rinna not being here and whatnot? So, I don't know. I think it's obvious that Lisa Rinna didn't get fired. She quit. But whether or not she came to regret that choice and try to go back on it, who knows? But yeah, we see that and everyone comments how skinny Erica is now. And Erica's like, oh, I'm just on these hormones. And Dorit is like, are those hormones spelled O-Z-E-M-P-I-C? Dorit in her confessional is like going for Erica in the beginning because remember, Dorit's upset with Erica because Erica threw shade on her marriage at BravoCon. We'll get to that in just a moment. Eagle Woman's ritual begins and there's some more mockery and whatnot. And she's like, okay, like, I'm just kind of over it. You know what I mean? It's like all these white ladies and Garcelle, because Crystal wasn't really saying anything. They're just kind of like, Okay, Eagle Woman, you know what I mean? And speaking of which, I am really worried that this may be Crystal's last season. I'm just kind of calling it from the beginning. Like, I don't know. Um, I know she has some drama with Anne-Marie per the trailer, but Anne-Marie doesn't even come into the season until episode six, allegedly. Which is kind of weird for a full timer, unless it's like, a fucking long ass, like a fucking 20 episode season without the reunion, you know what I mean? But, um, I'm not sure. Something's telling me that Crystal's days may be numbered on this cast. I don't know. Just kind of a little inkling I have. Um, I'm cool with Crystal sticking around. I like that she kind of butts heads with Kyle a little bit, but I don't know if we'll be seeing much of that now. I'm not too sure. But anyways, that happens. Let me segue to a little healing activity. And Dorit, the hostess, she gets a pop in by honing in on Erica. She's like, I'm very upset with you, and I'm sure you know why. And then we get a flashback to the BravoCon comment. Now what happened was, over at BravoCon, a question came up, and Erica was asked, oh, who do you think, like, is headed for Splitsville next? Something along those lines, like, which, who, which housewife is headed to Splitsville? And Erica was like, oh, I don't want to answer because it will, it will feel bad. But of course, bitch, they're at BravoCon. Everyone's like, answer the fucking question, bitch! You know what I mean? But the thing is, Erica could have chosen anyone. Any it wasn't no fucking, oh, which housewife on your cast instead of Splitsville. At least I don't recall it saying that. I may be wrong, but I'm like 97% sure it was like, which housewife. It wasn't like specific to Beverly Hills. And she said Dorit and PK. And she did it very sassily. She like strutted to the end of the stage, was like Dorit and PK, did a hair flip, turned around. Everyone was shocked. Andy, his fucking jaw dropped, everything. It was like, oh my goodness. So that's why Dorit's upset with Erica. And I totally get it. I knew this was fucking coming. Everyone fucking did. They're like, yo. <laughs> And after Dorit calls the comment mean-spirited, Erica says, you know, I didn't want to answer the question, which she did say. She did say, I don't want to answer it before fucking answering it. But because of that, Dorit, she calls bullshit. She's like, you answered that question like someone who really wanted the attention, who really wanted to answer it. And Erica responds by being like, I'm a performer and I give the people what they want. <laughs> like, basically, and I, you know, the thing is, I don't think she's wrong with that because, bitch, she's not BravoCon. Like, do you know how hard they would have fucking booed Erica? But the thing is, Erica could have thrown some other bitch she doesn't care about under the bus. Spark some drama with some other bitch. Maybe she doesn't watch other franchises. I'm not sure why she felt need to say Dorit, but I guess she was just like, I give people what they wanted. And Dorit, in her confessional, she really pushes back against that stance. Standing up, going to the center stage, delivering the line. But Erica ultimately says, look, it was a shady question, so I gave a shady answer. It is what it is. And um, Erica then asks if Dorit's marriage is strong. And yeah, it's like, oh, Erica. And in a confessional, Miss Sutton Strack, <laughs> she's blowing the fucking tea. And she's like, the only rumor I've ever heard about Dorit and PK's marriage is when he got his DUI that there may or may not have been a very woman in the car. That's the only thing I've heard. 
So, she even like gives us that little gem. There's gonna be a little Real Housewives news and memes video on Dorit and PK following this, so stay tuned for that. And Dorit ultimately says that Erica lashed out because of what she's going through. And Erica points out that, look, I've had a very rough two years, and we all fucking, you know, come after each other. And production plays, you know, all these different clips of the past two years of the ladies really gunning for Erica from Sutton to Garcelle to Dorit to Crystal. And at that point, Erica gets emotional and she's like, you know, I was getting hit from all sides and I just needed a moment to catch my breath and I wasn't allowed to do that. And, you know, that's why I was rough and I apologize to you all as your friend. And, you know, she apologizes, she gets emotional, she really gets vulnerable. Um, and yeah, moving along to Kyle, cause she's like, Okay, I'm ready to go next. Like, I'm ready to fucking open up and get emotional and just lay it on the table. Uh, she says that the Kathy situation from last season really shifted her relationships with everyone. And she says she felt unsupported and she just expected more from Dorit and Sutton in particular. And, you know, she also speculates that Sutton, you know, didn't really rush to her defense because she wants to, like, have the Kathy connection. She wants to get invited to Kathy's parties. She wants, like, she wants, she, for, like, social climber shit, basically. And it's like, now, Kyle, why do you act like you weren't a complete fucking bitch to Sutton last season? Like, what the fuck? Like, maybe Sutton didn't support you because you didn't deserve to be supported, bitch. Like, I mean, fuck, you know what I mean? Like, damn. And Garcelle then says, look, Kyle, like, I really felt for you last year. But I also kind of questioned you a little bit because from where I was sitting, it looked like you weren't like going after the people who were attacking your family. Basically saying that, you know, you just stood idly by as Erica and Lisa Rinna went for Kathy and you didn't do anything. So that was kind of weird from Garcelle's perspective. But Kyle, she, um, in the confessional specifically, she responds to being like, oh, why doesn't Garcelle get that Kathy is the one who started all of this shit? And, you know, I've had plenty of experiences with Kathy where she, you know, really pops off on me and, you know, she's hurt me repeatedly. So it, it sounds like Kyle is kind of saying Kathy did say the shit she said last year. And that's why she didn't like, or at least... Kathy has said similar shit enough to where Kyle was like, I don't even know if I can defend you. Kyle did something similar to Kim Richards. You know, it came to like, you know, you're indefensible. I don't know if I can defend you based on the behavior that you have shown me. And so Kyle's big on that and she's consistent. So I'll give her that. And there are plenty of people who are ready and just waiting to call Kyle a bad sister. And you know, the thing is though, there are a lot of dynamics that we do not know about and will never know about because of who their mother is and how they raise them. And if you've done your research into who their mother is, Big Kathy, and some of the stories of how she raised her daughters, it is very eye-opening. It kind of shows some of the, the dark, ugly side of the famous families. But anyways, the ladies then agree to try to be better friends to each other and they end the little spiritual retreat with a nice group hug. Uh, we then check in with Sutton on another day who's continuing chatting about her fucking horse with her assistant. Um, then we see Jennifer Tilly, she pops in. She's very good friends with Sutton. Um, I only know her from the fucking Chucky movies. Um, Sutton then opens up about how she's in like a brand new era, you know what I mean? Like her her kids are grown, she's kind of focusing on herself for the first time and whatnot, and she wants to basically rub her success in her ex-husband's face, essentially, because she was saying how when she and her ex-husband got married, they were equals, they were both working, but then she got pregnant and he was like, I don't want you working anymore. And you know, um, she was just basically getting an allowance and shit and focusing on the family and helping him as he built his empire and whatnot. And I don't even know what he does, but he's very rich. And Jennifer Tilly says something like, you know, he didn't have money when you guys got together. He built all of that while you guys were married. Like you helped him build that. And that's how Sutton got a nice, cool $300,000 a month in spousal support. And it's like, holy shit. And Sutton's like, you know, I never want to be, I, I want to be, you know, financially independent and do my thing. I never want to have to rely on someone like that again. 
I'm not gonna give up these fucking checks, though, because I'd be stupid, too. And I, I agree with that shit, girl, like, you know, but that is a pretty fucking penny, Miss Sunstrack. So, yeah, she talks about that, how it's really important to her to show her kids, you know, that's important to do your own thing and to have your own money and, you know, be independent. So, good for Sun. And Sun says, you know, I earned that money. Going against fucking Robin Dixon's past comment, like, I don't believe in that stuff. No, Sun's like, I earned that shit, I'm getting my fucking fair dues, bitch. Um, Erica links up with her therapist, she speaks on how therapy has, like, given her the tools to, like, regulate her emotions now, she's got a lot better with that. And they said we were discussing the Tom Girardi and his indictment, and how it, like, impacted Erica, and she's like, you know, well, you know, I'm off the hook when it comes to, like, the stealing of the money, People are still hating on me because they think they're like, oh, you spent the money, blah, blah, blah. So we can talk about that for a little bit. And Erica says that, you know, she does need to be a better friend to people. And her therapist encourages her to practice empathy. And Erica's like, how do I do that? How do I do that? And the therapist's like, practice being in people. It's like, are you a fucking sociopath? And it's just like, how do I be empathetic? What? It's like, okay, Erica. Kyle and Dorit then link up for dinner. We learn that Kyle hasn't drank in seven and a half months. And I haven't drank in almost three months, girl. It's like, okay, girl. Like, I'm on my California sober shit. So I'm not drinking, but I am smoking weed still. So there's that. But you know, it's like, I'd rather smoke weed than smoke fucking like vapes and like tobacco and shit. Bitch. So I, that's, that's what I tell myself, damn it. And you know, Again, I'm not drinking, so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly partake in some weed, damn it. But anyways, we learned that things are still kind of weird between Kyle and Kathy from last year, and, you know, Kyle says she doesn't deserve her mistreatment, and, you know, Kathy, she's used to people letting her get away with her bad behavior, and Kyle's over it. And we'll get more on this later on, but Kyle is, like, done with the bullshit. She's, like over it she's in her it's giving like um, it, it's almost like, like midlife crisis almost but it's like she's just over this shit you know what i mean dorit then speaks on how she had a really rough year as well and you know um mostly on account of like the post robbery ptsd and dorit admits that you know pk is always in london and at one point i was like are we are we even gonna make it like are we, is her marriage gonna survive like i feel like i'm not i'm not getting the support and she stresses it's not like one thing. It's not like he, like, cheated or something like that, but he's just not giving the support. And Kyle's really empathizes to an extent. She's like, you know, every marriage goes through those phases when you have those. And, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we see Kyle and Dorit talking about these things. Then later on, Kyle and Mauricio have their marital issues. Dorit and PK have their own little thing bubbling up. Moving along, the next scene involves Garcelle taking her twin boys, Jax and Jade. They're 15 years old. They're going to the beach, and they're having a discussion about, like, the dynamic between them, basically. Jack says, oh, you know, I feel like I want some more freedom. And Garcelle says, I feel like you guys don't allow me to parent you. Just kind of talking about, like, just their dynamic and their day-to-day -day kind of interactions. We learn that Jack's kind of like, oh, you know, I don't like having to go back and forth between my mom's house and my dad's house. I feel like you'd be better for in one space. And... Um, they then kind of get on how Garcelle has to travel a lot for work. They said this one time they're at their dad's for like three weeks straight because she was working, I think in London. And yeah, and Jack Ship says, you know, I feel like you're wanting to like be very hands-on and parenty now, but I needed that two years ago as opposed to now. And at one point Garcelle's like, are you saying that I like wasn't there for you as a mom? And he's like, yeah, like I'm saying, like he's very just straight up about it and um, Full disclosure, I recently had to have, like, a really open conversation with my mom about, like, our own kind of dynamic and stuff like that. Like, you know, I don't feel, like, supported by you sometimes. I, feel, I don't feel like you've changed over the years. Like, I've seen my dad change and, you know, like, things like that. Like, just kind of opening up. And it did get a lot better, you know what I mean? Um, I do think that maybe Jax was a little, maybe, like, a tad bit, like, not as reassuring as he could have been. But I... I also understand he's maybe has some anger towards Garcelle. He wants her to know how hurt he is. I can totally understand that. You know what I mean? So, um, I really get it. And Garcelle acknowledges, you know, I'm glad he's opening up and being honest, but it does hurt her. It feels like a knife to her heart, she says. We learn in the next episode that he's going to be like, I want to just move in with my dad. And I will say, 
I feel like him making that move right after having this conversation may have been a little bit too, like, a little bit OD, a little bit too much, but, um, you know, it's his dynamic. He's kind of doing his own thing, exploring these waters and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, she just kind of, she's, again, she's glad that he's opening up, but she still really feels bad. Um, but, yeah. And lastly, we check in with Kyle and Mauricio, and, you know, they're kind of annoyed with each other because... Kyle's, like, waiting for Mauricio to hop off a call so he can chit-chat. He's on a call with some bitch named Jane. I think she's, like, his assistant. And they're working out, like, scheduling. He's like, okay, Portia's on spring break this week, but I'm gonna have to go to Portugal. And they're discussing, like, flights, if they're first class or not, how he can, like, loop in his golfing as well. Just kind of working out scheduling shit. Kyle's getting very annoyed. Um, Mauricio then kind of links up with her and... You know, just kind of like, it, it's very like tense. And Cal's like, you know, we're having to like schedule appointments to talk about our schedules. Like this is, it, it's getting rough. During their sit down, Mauricio gives Kyle props cause she's really been hitting the gym, really working out, really devoting a lot of time to that. So good on her. I don't remember who the fuck said it, but I think it was on Realities of Miami actually, after Lenny started working out a lot and they were like, Oh, if he's working out a lot, it's not a good sign. So that's what I'm, also I'm thinking with Kyle working out a lot. It's like, ooh, girl, who are you working out for? But working out for herself, Kyle says it's an outlet, you know, like, I don't know, Kyle's on her, like, midlife crisis shit, I'm telling you. And, you know, like, it happens, it's natural, she's doing her damn thing. Um, but yeah, Kyle then reveals that she has five tattoos, though Mauricio only knew about three of them. And um, Kyle's like, well, maybe you should be looking at my body more closely. And she points out that, you know, back in the day, Mauricio would recognize, like, a new freckle. But, you know, he doesn't recognize whole ass new tattoos on her. Like, that's an issue. Um, Mauricio then says that five is enough. But Kyle's like, you know, I'll get some more if I want to. I might get some more. Because they're all, like, little itty-bitty tattoos and whatnot. And Mauricio straight up says, I will not allow that. And Kyle gets on her, well, it's my body, so you're gonna have to deal with it. It's my choice. And Mauricio's like, love Bean, don't be like that. If I just allowed to... Like, try to fucking, like, add some padding after the fact, but Cal's very much digging her heels in the ground. Like, if I want more tattoos, I'm gonna get more tattoos. There's nothing you can fucking do about it. And Cal explains that, like, she's in a point in her life where she doesn't have to explain anything to anybody, including Mauricio. And she's like, you know, I grew up having to do exactly what my mother wanted. Then it was everything that you know, Kathy wanted and Kim wanted. And it was like, you know, me having to like dedicate all my life, you know, to the girls and Mauricio. But now she's just like, I'm doing me. And yeah, girl, the episode ends right there. So now we see just what type of shit Kyle's on. And in addition to Kyle, Dorit also really like stood out in this episode. It's like, okay, Dorit, like shit. She's fucking trying to clock in a little bit. Um, but y'all know what you think down in the comments. Be sure to also like and subscribe. Thanks again. Bye.